In this image enhancement, we want to add a little bit more interest in the image, and the request was uh, from our friend who supplied this image, Bob Laramie, who was just with us on our Durango Telluride Fall Foliage trip. Bob, thank you so much for the image. It's a great image, and I do agree. We just happen to have no clouds this day, and it would be nice to have some. Now, but by the way, in, in way of preparation, I did choose, or I am going to choose some clouds that just appeared a couple of days later in the same area. So when you have the same kind of cloud types and color temperatures in the sky, it does make it a lot easier. So uh, keep that in mind when you're going to do some compositing of clouds. So first of all, as I look at the main image, just a couple little things. Uh, love where the engine is, love the power of it. However, the cars in the back here have gotten a little bit too bright. Now, this image is a JPEG that Bob sent me, so I'm going to have to work with this. So I want to bring down the brightness and the intensity of this a little bit so that it's not taking away from the engine itself. So to do that, I'm going to get a brush. Um, check auto mask is on. I'm going to turn on the mask overlay so I can see where I'm painting. And I'm going to select the cars and some of the light stone around it. And because my goal is just to bring it down a little bit. I want to take the intensity down a smidge just so that it's not competing so much with the engine. All right, that's good enough. Let's hit O to toggle off the overlay. And now let's just bring the exposure down just a little bit. Yeah, just that little bit takes some of the heat off. I'm gonna bring the highlights down in general also around the area, maybe not quite that much. About right there, and that looks better. Now it's not competing with the engine so much. Now, speaking of the engine, let me hit done on this. I'm gonna bring the overall shadows up a little bit just to open the whole image and it seems a little bit odd but I'm actually going to add a little contrast back in as well now I see some things I'll probably do at the very end so I think this image is good and now we need to get our sky to composite now we can't do this in Lightroom we're going to have to go into Photoshop and again the thing that Bob asked for was how can I put in a sky and have the clouds partly show through the smoke and the steam coming off the engine now, I could take the easy way out and just put some clouds over here, but we're going to replace the entire sky and find a way to have the clouds show a little bit where appropriate through these, through these, uh, the steam and the uh, smoke. Now, the clouds that I'm going to choose are, I'm going to use this scene right here. Uh, this was just shot a couple days later, right up the road from where the train was. So it's exactly the kind of clouds that happened there. So I'm going to select that image. And I'm going to hit hold down commander control and select the train. And we're going to go up to photo, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. This will then open Photoshop and put both of the images on layers in the same file. All right, so here's our two images opened up as a layered file in Photoshop. We can see there's obviously a resolution difference. Now, this was emailed to me as a JPEG. This is an original RAW from a 42 megapixel camera, but that's okay because it's going to give us a lot of flexibility having this bigger file. So I'm going to hit on the, the image with the sky in it, hit Command T, and I'm going to shrink this down a bit so that we're kind of in the same ballpark. Hit Enter on that to resize it. And then I'm going to Command or Control click on that image to highlight it, and let's just crop to get rid of all the extra stuff we don't need. All right. So here is our train on top of our sky. So I'm going to hide the sky for a minute just so that it's not uh, a distraction. What I have to do first is select the sky. So let's choose the train. And get, we're going to try it with the magic wand first. I'm going to set the tolerance to 32. I'm going to turn off contiguous because I want it to get in between these openings in the trees. So let's choose that. Pretty good. Hold down the shift key to add to that. And then let's come up in here as well. And I want the clouds too. I want this all kind of selected. Nope, that last one got us a lot more than we needed. So I'm going to Command Z that. And then I'm just going to use the lasso tool. Hold down the shift key just to get that little piece. And it picked up some other stuff we don't want. So I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key. And you see it turns the lasso to a minus. And I'm going to kind of, this since this cloud here is completely opaque, uh, there's not going to be any 
uh, clouds coming through that steam cloud. So let's just get rid of that stuff. All right, so there's a pretty good selection of our sky. And yes, we have this border with the clouds. We're going to deal with that later. Before we do anything else, let's save this selection as the sky. So we'll call it sky, hit OK. So now we know we have that piece available. All right, so I'm going to deselect that. Now let's go over. I'm going to hide the train temporarily. Let's go to our scene with the clouds we're going to want. I'm going to use the marquee tool and I'm just going to select kind of this entire thing because I'm not sure what pieces we're going to want to use. And fortunately, the upslope of the mountains here kind of mirrors the upslope of what we're going to be uh, pasting it into. So that's good. So I'm just going to hit copy with that selected. Deselect that, come back to our train engine. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to hide the background. We're probably actually going to be done with that. Now let's load in the sky. So we go to select load selection sky hit OK. Now remember our our new sky is sitting on the clipboard waiting for us. So I've got my train selected. Remember my sky is on the clipboard. So I'm going to go to edit paste special paste into and it puts the sky in place. Now I'm going to get the move tool right up here and I can move it around and we see there's some of our background. Now one of the beauties of a sky is that they are stretchable. So I'm going to stretch that and then I'm going to hold the shift key and make it actually a little bit taller that way. I think, uh, I think right about there is good. In fact, I'm going to put this open area just to the left of the stack on the train. All right, pretty good. So I'm going to hit enter to size that. Now you can see the problem is, well, our smoke is completely gone. So let's go ahead and turn the opacity down on our sky that's been pasted in so we can see where the smoke is. And right now, here's our mask. I just hit Alt and clicked on the mask to show it. In fact, we've got some spots showing through. So while I'm here, I'm just going to get a paintbrush and kind of paint those in. So what I need to do is select the mask and I'm going to paint back in. I'm going to work at about 50%. I'm going to paint back in over these clouds. And you can see here, there's that interface there. I want to get rid of that. Not completely. Let's get a little bit bigger mask. I just kind of want these to be able to show through again. All right, so now if I turn the opacity back up, now you can see we've kind of got our, we've got our clouds and our steam back. In fact, maybe too much because we want these clouds behind to start to show through. All right, so now here's our mask. You can see what we've got there. In fact, I don't think I like what it did up here, so I'm going to switch to white and I'm going to paint that back in because there's some clouds back there that I like as well as in here. Let's get rid of some of those dark spots that showed up. A little bit smaller there. All right. So we've got our smoke coming through. I'm sorry. Let me get my brush again. I'm just going to work at about 20%. I just want to have some of the smoke coming out to go over that. Now we want to be able to have it show through a little bit more. So there's before and after. Well, that's a good start. Oh, I'm actually seeing some of the previous mountain over there. So that means I need to command T that. And I'm going to hold down the shift and I'm just going to bring that down a little bit so that we don't see some of the trees from the previous scene. Okay, better. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take another copy of this layer. I'm just going to hit command J. And now I'm going to so if we take a look at our mask here, we see the smoke. Now I'm going to make this layer. I'm going to paint back some of the white over top of this to get rid of it. You'll see what's going to happen in a second. Whoops, that was wrong. So I select the mask and I'm going to hit white and I put white on here to start to bring this back. I'm just at 20%, but I want this to, just to start to disappear again. Now relax, I know we've kind of completely lost the smoke there, but what I'm going to do on this layer is I'm going to bring the opacity down 
so that I can have the clouds starting to show through just a little bit that makes it look realistic. So there's our before and there's our after. So we've got the new sky and it is showing through and it is blending in with the rest of the clouds. Now one other thing, when you do a sky composite like this, right at the horizon, uh, these clouds are going down much lower and it doesn't fit. The, these in the, in the original effect, if you look at the original sky, you can see the sky fades a lot lighter here. So to our mask, in fact, I'm going to take these two, whoops, I'm going to take these two layers and I'm going to merge those two. So I just want to merge those layers, Command E, and I'm going to put a new mask on this with the gradient tool. So I'm going to hit G for gradient. I'm going to put black in the foreground. I want the gradient to be set from foreground to transparent, which is the second one in. And I'm going to drag from here at an angle to kind of be perpendicular to the horizon of the mountaintop just to cut back down on this. And you can see it's, it just lightens up a little bit. So if I alt click on the mask, you can see what we did there. In fact, if I want to bring it up a little higher, I could do something like that. Let's see how that looks. And that looks probably even better. Now, as we did this, I can see there's something going on here where that got a little bit unnatural. So let's add another brush to that. I'm going to work at about 30% and let's just bring that back in. There we go. That's looking a lot better. So again, we started there. There's our new sky, liking it. So we can get rid of our sky. In fact, we can crop it. So I'm going to command or control click on the image of the train itself and come up to image crop. And there we go. There's our new sky with the clouds kind of coming through it. Now, the beauty of it is now let's not even let's not even go there. So I'm going to save this into Lightroom just by hitting command S. This will save it and put it back in the Lightroom. And then I'm just going to do a couple of little final finishing touches in Lightroom to finish off this image. So we can go back into Lightroom and there it is. There's our new sky. Uh, one thing I always like to do to my Lightroom images is I'm going to add about a minus 12, maybe a little more in this case. I'm going to go about 17 with our vignette and you can see what that's done as soon as it finishes drawing here. So there's our, there's with the vignette there's without it. So it just kind of recenters you in the image. Looking pretty good. We started here and we've got a much more interesting image with that sky. And again, when you're doing these sky composites, do it to taste. You might find that you want the sky to be even a little bit more subtle. In fact, while we're here, let's go ahead and do that. Let me just show you. If I bring the opacity of the sky down a little bit, maybe that looks a little more natural to you. In fact, I might be agreeing. I think maybe that take the sky was a little bit too intense and that it was competing with the image of the engine. If we bring this down a little bit, we get it to blend even more with the previous sky. Yeah, I like that better. So let's go ahead and save that. And we'll bring that back into Lightroom. Have a new copy of that. And again, we went from there to there. Looks a lot better. Let's go full screen and take a look at it. And we have a really cool image with the clouds behind the smoke, through the smoke, and it's ready to go.